Uh, right, well, good evening, everybody. We're going to look at the uh, look at the sun. I'll turn it off in a minute, but I uh, I just thought I'd put a picture up because it's uh, it's nice to to think about it really a bit, isn't it? Um, so so yeah, we're we're going to talk about the sun. Um, uh, it's a it's something we're quite aware of, isn't it? It's a a great big hot ball of hydrogen and helium, and it's big. Uh, it's uh, it's apparently a hundred times wider than the Earth is. So so yeah, that's uh, you know. But we uh, just probably can't imagine how uh, how how big it is. I guess um, it, it's important. Its gravity hold literally holds the solar system together, um, and so without it, we uh, the Earth would be be spinning off into into space. Uh, and and you know so it has a, a critical critical um, part in 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 just where we are and and what happens to the Earth. It's it's hot. Yeah, that photo obviously is, must be taken through some sort of darkened filter, I assume, because, you know, you, you can't look at it. It is so bright, can you? Um, the core of it, we're told, is uh, is 15 million degrees centigrade. And, and so, it, you know, again, unbelievably hot. You just can't imagine these numbers. Uh, and science tells us that it has enough fuel within it um, to keep burning for another five billion years or, or thereabouts. And, and and five billion years, of course, is a is a long time, but actually compared to forever, it, it is actually you know quite a small period of time. So so you know there, there's definitely uh, something that 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 that's going to have to change about that uh, in time, and 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 we will come to that in 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 time. Uh, and because it is so big and so important and so obvious in our lives, um, the sun became worshipped in its uh, as a god in its own right. So, as I understand it, Baal um, is uh, is a sun god, uh, and he's sort of well represented in in ancient civilizations as well. And there are there are all sorts of other names for sun gods. Uh, and so, yes, that's the that's the sun. That's what it is. It's it's something that we are very aware of, uh, and and uh, is is important to all of us. But but what does the Bible say about it? Um, and and that's where we'll we'll come at it this evening. I think I think I've changed my mind about what the Bible does symbolize. That was that was the uh, the original title that given to me. Bible symbols the sun. I, I think I've sort of changed my mind uh, about what it symbolizes, and I'll I'll show you why, and hopefully I can explain at least uh, at least some of it. Um, and and yeah, let's uh, let, let's see where we get to, I suppose. But we're going to start in Genesis chapter one, um, and and Genesis chapter one is important because that's where. The sun is created and it's described for us and, and we're given some detail about its creation, although it doesn't actually mention it by name, does it? It, it just says that there are two great lights in uh, in that section that we've just read. But actually, let's let's just start in verse three, because we, we, we know that we have this sort of almost two two sections of creation, don't we, in, in Genesis? We, we have these first three days where where thing where sort of the, the earth itself is formed and and then we have the second set of three days where where the the, the earth is is populated pretty much don't you um and and so so we have the in in verse three we have the first day yeah I, i've labeled it in my bible sunday now just to just to keep keep track of these things um so verse three god said let there be light and there was light uh, and so this is the first thing that there is light without the sun that, that, that's what's created uh, and verse four, God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. And, and so that's what God creates. He creates light and he looks at the light and sees that it is good. Uh, and then God separates the light from the darkness. And, and that's important, I think, in our understanding of the sun, because the very same words are used when we come to look at the the sun shortly, uh, and so God uh, and 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 uh, you can all uh, you can all have a good laugh at, at me and my uh, my 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 lack of Bible knowledge. I suppose it it wasn't until it was it was the same series somebody was talking about the moon uh, at Canuck Bible class, uh, and and it wasn't until then that I I was I was looking at my Bible and thinking, oh, because 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 in my mind every day in in Genesis in Genesis one a day of creation God looks at what He's created and it's good. But but that isn't the case on the Sunday or the or the Monday actually is it on, on the Sunday he creates the light and that is good, uh, and then he separates the light from the darkness, and 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 he doesn't see anything good in the darkness. The the two things are to be separated, to be divided, uh, is what it says in in the New King James, 
and so God divides the light from the darkness and, and the light is good and therefore the darkness is bad. And 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 we understand that as a, a Bible principle, that we understand the idea of, of darkness and, and sin and light and God's glory and God's God's goodness. Um, but but right, the, the first thing God does is, is separate the good from the bad. God divides these two things. And actually, while while we're talking about that idea on the on the Monday, verse six, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Uh, and so God does a lot more division on the Monday. And, and there is no talk about goodness on the Monday either, that that this goodness, this separation of good from bad that, that was going to be absolutely essential it is not a good thing in God's eyes. It, it is something that is necessary, but but it is not pronounced as good. And so with that idea in mind, let, let's go to verse 14. So let's let's skip down to Wednesday. And, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And, and so that's that's that first thing that I wanted to pick up on, that, that what God has put these lights in place to do was to divide the, the, the day from the night, to divide the, the light from the darkness is, is what it said in verse four, wasn't it? And, and that word for divide is exactly it. So it's two words, and I, I haven't written them down, I'm afraid, but but it, it's two words. And those two words are used, uh, they're not used very often together. They are used in various places. Um, but, but they are used in verse four to divide the light from the darkness and in verse 14 to divide the day from the night. Uh, and it's uh, the idea is divide between. It's, it's almost a, it's two words that mean the same thing. It's being emphasized at this point. Um, and 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 in verse three, it is God who divides the light from the darkness. Uh, and so in verse four, in verse 14, then then that that role that God played in dividing the light from the darkness. Uh, and in my mind, that's the the idea of judgment. Um, so so the separation of good from bad. Well, well that's God's role of judgment, isn't it? And, and and so what what is the these lights are to do? They're to do the same thing. They're to divide day from night, light from dark. And again, that is the role of judgment. And, and that was God's role in verse four. And so we certainly see that the, the, the sun, or the, these two great lights and, and the sun in particular, must have something to do with with symbolizing God in his role of judgment. And, and, and to my mind, that's that's relatively clear once you've got those two verses uh, side by side. And, and and that idea of divide between this idea of separation, well, that's used in, in terms of the, the, the veil in the tabernacle. So, so dividing the or, or separating the, the most holy place. Um, it's, it's talked about in the law as well in terms of dividing between things that are clean and unclean. So, so the, the correct foods and, uh, and and all sorts of things like that. So so it's very much an idea of, of being very much making sure these two things are very much separate and and choosing between clean and unclean is, is what you see later on in the law. Uh, and so that's, again, an idea of, of judgment, isn't it? Judging what is clean and unclean according to the, the, the signs that, that or the, the rules that God has put in place. And so if we continue verse 14, that, that you've got this role of, of, of this, this symbolic role of, of God's judgment, I think, contained there in this division of day from night. But you've also got ideas, let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. So, so that's what the, the, the sun and, and the moon are, are going to do, is, is what it says. And, and days and, and years, we, we, we understand what they are there, there uh, and, and we understand why the sun is, is so important in that cycle, isn't it? It's, uh, we, we see the sun rise and we see the sun set and, and that's a day and we, we, the, the earth goes round the sun and we see that as, as shadows and lengthening and shortening of days. Uh, and, and that's uh, how it, it, it symbolise or that's how it, it, it counts off the years, doesn't it? But but the sight the sun was also to be for for signs and for seasons, and and that idea of seasons is interesting. Um, obviously we have the idea of seasons, the the weather changes on the earth, doesn't it? And and we understand again that's to do with this cycle of of the earth going round the sun. But but that word is actually a, appointed times, and and there is a lot about that idea of of appointed times, uh, and so it's it, it's the idea of maybe and and we'll, we'll come to it the times that god has set aside um and and put in place um uh, we'll, we'll talk about 
so so seasons is is used as as appointed in terms of cycles of time uh, and so in in genesis um so so if we just want to genesis 17 for example just for a moment it's it's not far away uh genesis 17 verse 21 but my covenant i will establish with isaac whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year, uh, and set time is this this same word season. So so it has uh, so so the sun um, has this idea of of being to what to do with a set time with an appointed time, uh, and, uh, and 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 certainly there is some idea of of there is a time which God has appointed, and and if you think about that idea of judgment to do with that as well, there is a time when when God has appointed He will judge the world, isn't there? And that is is completely relevant as well. The, the the same word appointed times, interestingly, is to do is is used to do with the the, the tabernacle. Um, it, when it's called the tent of congregation, the, the word congregation is actually the tent of appointed times, and, and so there is a, a an idea associated with that as well. And uh, and what was the, the the tabernacle used for? Well, Exodus chapter thirty. Gives us a nice clear statement of, of what that was to be used for. So Exodus 30, verse 36. And you shall beat some of it very fine and put some of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. Uh, and so the, the, the tabernacle of uh, the tabernacle of appointed times was, was to be the place where God would meet with them. So, so there is an appointed time where where God would be able to meet with them. Is 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 the idea that, that that's used with in terms of the the tabernacle there. Uh, and so, yes, it, it, I will meet. I will. Uh, uh, and and actually, sorry, in in that verse, the, the that idea of you've got the tabernacle of, of of appointment, so the tabernacle of congregation, but actually, where I will meet with you, and that is where I will appoint you is the other bit and 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 that idea of appointing again that, that there's a that there's a, a a verdict on this judgment isn't there and, and and actually that is an appointment um to those who are are judged to be worthy uh and and so yeah all these these ideas i think i they, they suddenly start to make sense for me but the idea of a set of signs there so it's for signs and for seasons well signs is the token of a covenant um so it's used about the rainbow um, it's used about Hezekiah's sundial, uh, and and so it's um, it's the token that, that there is an appointed time. I think so. It, it symbolises this appointed time, and and it's the token that it will happen, just as the rainbow was the the token that, that God will never flood the world again. Uh, and so 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 yes, that's what we we learn about the sun uh, in verse fourteen. Um, while we while we're in there, God said. Uh, so verse 16, if we come down there, God made two great lights. There was a greater light to rule the day and a, a lesser light to rule the night. Uh, he made the stars also. And and, it, and that's an exciting throwaway phrase, isn't it? You know, we've got a a, a huge number of stars in the sky. They're, they're likened scripturally to, to the number of grains of sand on the seashore, aren't they? Uh, and they, God just made those also as a as a as a as, as an aside, really. Uh, but in this verse, um, so these are these are going to be two great lights, uh, and the greater light will rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night is the, the the best description. That that leads us to our understanding that these are the sun and the moon, I guess, aren't they? Uh, and if we think about what God does, well, he he makes them, and, and literally that is just a, a an act of creation. So so um, it, it's used a lot across the Bible. It's it's used about man being made. It talks that Sarah is making cakes for Abraham when when they are visited by angels, um, and and yeah, it is just a, an act of putting something together. But but there is some some interest in the in the idea of these lights that are made. So so these are these lights are. It talks about the a, a luminous body is the idea a a, a, pro, a an item from which light comes. I, when I back when I, uh, I studied optics, I could never quite understand the difference between uh, luminance and illumination. And, and there's another term as well, luminous flux. But 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 there is a, a difference between them. And 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 this idea of luminous body is something from which light comes. And it, it's used a lot about um, oil, the, the, the oil in the tabernacle burning uh, and the light that comes from there. So this is a a light that is coming out of something. 
and, and that is what the, the the sun and the moon are described as here um interesting it doesn't quite tie in with our understanding our scientific understanding of the moon does it but but that these are both bodies from which light is emitted um however there, there is a, a different word that's used for light so so verse three going back to verse three when god said let there be light and in verse 17 when god sets them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth that is that is light which is being that is illumination so that is light that is falling on something and so there's, there's a difference between things that are illuminated uh, and things which are producing light themselves and and that's what the, the sun is um which, which as i say is, is only really else described as the the oil in the tabernacle and so yes these are that's what the sun is uh, and in this this sort of this idea then if we could just turn to psalm 74 because it's it's interesting in this context this idea of of signs and and seasons and and this idea of light as well uh, so psalm 74 and verse 4 Uh, your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs. They seem like men who lift up axes among the thick trees. Uh, and then down to verse 8, they said in their hearts, let us destroy them altogether. They have burned up all the meeting places of God in the land. And so you have this idea that enemies will roar in seasons and, and they'll set up their signs four signs is what it says it, it, it's translated as banners in the new king james uh, but it, it literally is they will set up their own signs for signs and, and this is really people in opposition to to what what the sun is is there to do so so people who want to form their own judgment instead of using god's standards is, is the idea so so that, that's the idea in verse four and then if we come to down down to verse 16 the day is yours the night also is yours you have prepared the light and the sun. You have set all the borders of the earth. You have made summer and winter. And, and so actually you have this idea that day and night are both controlled by God. Uh, and then verse 20, have respect to the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the haunts of cruelty. Uh, and so remember this, the, these signs that, that the sun is there to do as well. Um, that the sun... The, the sun is there to, to signify this, although it, it seems at these times that the, the darkness is winning, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, and if we just, while we're in Psalms, if we turn to Psalm 90 for a moment. Uh, Psalm 90, verse 8. You have set our iniquities before you, our, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. Uh, and again, that's that idea of of God's judgment, isn't it? That, that our iniquities are set before Him and are illuminated by the light of Your countenance, which is is symbolised by the sun. It is what Genesis tells us. But, and so, yes, I, I think those ideas sort of are are nicely um, from Genesis, nicely picked up by the uh, the, the rest of the Bible. And so I think Genesis tells us that, that the sun separates the light from the darkness. And, and as I said, I, I, I certainly see that idea of, of judgment there. The, the lights are described in verse 16 of, of Genesis 1 as the, the greater light is to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And, and I think that's where the idea of, of, of sort of this, their idea of, um, of rulership comes towards. But, but to my mind, that's more to do with, with God's um, moral rulership and god setting the standard for what is right and wrong in in day and night i think um and they they certainly symbolize god's dominion over the earth god's god's judgment of it um and the fact that that there is both good and bad in the world i suppose and although god allows people to make their own decisions god is still in control is the is the idea we take from it uh, and actually, if we're, we're still in Psalms, there's another couple of Psalms we can look at. Psalm 103. Uh, Psalm 103 and verse 21. It says, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And, and the idea of, of rule 
um, is, is that idea of dominion. So it's the same word as ruled as we have in, in, in Genesis. And so it's the idea of, of have, have it, God having total control, total governance over, over everything. And that's what the sun and moon between them, I think, symbolize. Uh, and the reason I, I came here was because uh, that uh, bless the Lord, all you his hosts in, in verse 21 is, is, is echoing the language at the beginning of Genesis 2, where it says that, that God had. Let's, uh, let's read it properly, shall we? Uh, the, verse Genesis 2, verse 1, then the he, thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And so it's talking about God, they, everything that God had created is is part is his dominion is is under his rule is what that psalm is telling us uh, now interestingly let's just uh take a, a step back because we we said that the the sun is going to burn for for five billion years is what scientists tell us but but interestingly i'm i'm not sure that that's what the bible says and it's 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 interesting i think to think about it if you are still in psalms then psalm 104 verse 19 says he appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it's going down. And and it, it's an interesting idea that, that maybe the, the sun is always set to have an end. So, so I, I said that five billion years isn't as long as forever, which obviously would make sense. Uh, but we'll we'll see later on, I think, that, that actually the, the, there is there's definite ideas that, that in, in God's kingdom, there, there will be no sun. And so maybe that it you know it was always part of of God's creation. So it says that the sun knows. Where is it? Verse nineteen, wasn't it? Uh, the sun knows it's going down, but the sun knows when it's going to end. It's going to. It's got a place uh, in in God's creation for now, but it, it will one day come to an end. And and I quite like that idea. This this idea that that uh, that that the sun has a has a fault in it. That scientists tell us that it will burn for five billion years, but actually it, it won't. It, it will have a, a an end. Um, and maybe that, you know, there's, there's something that the scientists don't understand that means that the sun is going to come to an end. And it was it was inbuilt in God's creation back when he, he first produced the sun. Uh, and and yeah, that, that verse sort of suggests that to me. Um, Psalm 89 is, is similar on that vein as well. So Psalm 89, verse 36 his seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. And it's it's interesting, isn't it? You know, that's, uh, how how do you uh, how do you take that idea? This idea that David's throne will be like the sun before God. Well, the the, the sun is is representing the, the the light that was there anyway in in verse four of Genesis one, wasn't it? So the light that God created. Uh, the sun is there to represent that same process uh, and so 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 certainly that idea will always be before god maybe that that, uh, that the sun will be there in that idea of the, the righteous uh, those who have been judged righteous uh, will will always be there and and with these ideas in mind then just turn to ecclesiastes uh, ecclesiastes chapter 11 so ecclesiastes 11 verse 7 uh, and it's i think a, a bit of a challenge to us maybe truly the light is sweet it is pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun but if a man lives many years and rejoices in them all yet let him remember all the days of darkness for they will be many all that is coming is vanity and 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 we like light don't we it, it helps us see it is indeed pleasant for the eyes but but it's not pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun is it that's a a, a terrible burning ball of gas that that damages our retinas if we we stare directly at it uh, we shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be looking at them directly but but there is a challenge for us is aren't we if we if we like the idea if we're happy with the idea of of this of the sun symbolizing god's judgment then then are we happy when we think about God's judgment? Is it pleasant for our eyes to think about that, to, to look about God's judgment? Or, or is it challenging? Because we need to remember the days of darkness, for they will be many, uh, and, and, and think about those. So, so there is a challenge to us, isn't there, that we should, we should think about God's judgment and, and, and God's, God's 
what like think about those things which are good uh, and we should be happy with them we should delight in them uh, rather than delighting in the darkness and those things which are bad and yes it it it's that idea of of worshiping god and and rejoicing in in following his commands we'll have a look at at some places where where the sun is mentioned because i i think it sort of changed my ideas of of some of these uh, the first one and and probably the most oh no, no let's uh, let's start with uh, with genesis chapter 15 actually we'll uh, we'll go to that So Genesis 15 is, is altogether to do with, with God creating covenants with Abraham, or isn't, isn't it, or a, a covenant with Abraham. Uh, and so we've, we've already said that the sun is there to be a, a sign. It's there to be a, a token of a covenant. So that's, uh, you know, that, that fits in with what, uh, what Genesis tells us. Um, so, so in Genesis 15, verse 12, we've got the going down of the sun. So, so verse 12, now, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, Abraham, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Uh, and so we've we've got Abraham, the sun's going down. He is he is as dead because sleep has fell upon him. A deep sleep has fallen upon him. So 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 he is he is symbolically dead, isn't he, at this point? Uh, and in verse 17, it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch which passed between the pieces. Uh, and so you, he sees the, the pillar of fire. He sees God's glory. Um, and, and, and places where you see, see pillars of fire are, are, are things like the burning bush. And, 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 and it's, it's just this token that the, the covenant will be affirmed in, in these places. Uh, and so the sun has gone down in this case, and 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 so there is no none of God's judgment. But but even at this time, God is saying that I am going to 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 set my covenant with you, uh, and I'm going to give you a token of this covenant, um, uh, and I'm going to show you my glory. Even even at these darkest of times is is what God says here in in Genesis 15. I think. We next hear about the sun in Genesis 19, and, and this is when when Lot is is taken forcibly uh, out of out of Sodom, and and in verse so Genesis 19 verse 23, the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar, uh, and so Lot and his family are forcibly taken out of Sodom, and and the destruction comes on the city as the sun comes up, so so it is it, this this terribly sinful place. It, it's allowed during the night to to continue as it was. But as the sun comes up, God's judgment comes upon it uh, and, and this this the fire and the brimstone rains down on it. Uh, and and the, the, one of the reasons I've, I've particularly taken us here is this idea of of God's creation being being set in place from the start. And uh, and I don't know quite how we understand the fire and brimstone, but it certainly sounds like it could be a meteorite type event, doesn't it? Uh, and actually, if if it is a meteorite, then. Then, then there are some possibilities. God have, could have created it specially, but in my mind, it was it was set there in the heavens at the appropriate time, uh, it, and and so so at an appropriate time, God always knew it would come crashing down onto to the city at this time, but but it was set there in uh, in the start when when God created the earth and and set all His rules for it, just as the the, the sun was set up to to last for a particular amount of time, I think. Uh, but yes, we certainly have that idea of, of judgment coming on Sodom and Gomorrah uh, as the sun rises in Genesis 19. In Genesis 32, uh, and we're not going to go through every mention of the sun by any means, but I, I, I've just picked up a few as we, we go through Genesis because it's, it's interesting, I think. Genesis 32, verse 30, um, Jacob is wrestling with the with the angel, isn't he? And in verse 30, so so Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun rose on him and he limped on his hip. Uh, and so you have Jacob's mortality becoming apparent in the light of the sun. This this judgment uh, shines upon him and, and suddenly his frailty is apparent. His sins become uh, become visible, don't they? In the light of judgment, maybe. Uh, and then Genesis 37. So, so this is the 
the, the slightly tricky one and the one that has previously been used to sort of suggest maybe the, the sun, moon and stars are representing Israel and, and the family of, of Israel. But but actually, um, so Genesis 37 verse 9, then he, Joseph, dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. So, so the, 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 the explanation for the dream, as, as given by um, Jacob, is that, that this, this represents the family. But but it doesn't seem to, I don't think, does it? So so this isn't the the the, the God given inspiration for the dream, is it? And 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 so maybe the 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 and and, and also it is never fulfilled in in that way that that, that Joseph's mother died before the, the that Jacob and the the other brothers came down to Egypt. So so it isn't acted out in that way. Uh, however, potentially it, it might be acted out in that in in the future, mightn't it? So. So you know there there is a time when when the sun will come up and and the eleven stars so so the the nation of Israel will worship God and will accept His judgment I suppose and maybe that is is the the the, the meaning that that wasn't explained to us uh, at this time. There is uh, and will. Uh, so there is a warning for, for the children of Israel. So, so Deuteronomy chapter four, we said to begin with that, that it, it was sort of inevitable, I guess, that, that because the sun is so important, it would be worshipped by men. But the children of Israel are warned not to do that. So Deuteronomy four, verse 19, take heed lest you lift your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon and the stars, all the host of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them which the Lord your God has given to all the peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage. And so the, the children of Israel were warned against worshipping the sun. Don't, don't go and do that, it, it says. And, and, and yes, that was, uh, that was always a risk. And, and some of the, the, the gods which they, they did turn towards are, are, seem to have their, 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 their foundations in worship of the sun. So, so some of the idol, idols that they worshipped when they were in the land or, uh, and surrounded by the nations who were previously there um, were, were sun-worshipping tribes. The, the sun is, is mentioned other places, so if we, we skip to Joshua chapter 10 now. Uh, so Joshua 10, and the, the sun stands still, doesn't it? So Joshua 10, verse 12. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, suns stand still over Gibeon, the moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Uh, and so the sun stands still and and God looks on his people uh, and and this judgment comes on their enemies, doesn't it? Says uh, as the sun stands still at this time, uh, and God stays with them. Uh, and Isaiah thirty eight is 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 a similar um, miraculous occurrence uh, with the sun. Uh, it's Isaiah thirty eight verse eight. Uh, well, verse seven, and this is the sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Uh, and that, that word sign is the same as he's used in Genesis 1. So this is the, the, the covenant of the token that's coming to you. Verse 8, behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial, which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees backward. So the sun, sun returns 10 degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. And, and we've no idea how that was done physically, have we? Was it, did the earth rotate backwards? Did it, it stay still? Did did the sundial get turned? Well, you know what? What? What on earth happened at this time? We, we've no idea, and yet it was a a miraculous occurrence that there was going to be a token that God was in control, 
and, and God was willing to to hold off his judgment is, is what it's saying, wasn't it? God's, God, Hezekiah's life is going to be extended. Uh, and that is the, the symbol that happens at this time, isn't it, I think? Uh, and so God can and, and will do an, anything that, that is needed for those who follow him is, is what God's showing, I think. The other the other thing in, in terms of these ideas that, that struck me as I was looking at them was that that there are that, that sin is only sinful during the day, I, I think, is, is, is the idea I took. So, so Leviticus chapter 22, if uh, if you might, just so I can and explain that statement. Uh, so Leviticus 22, verse seven. Starting verse six, the, the person who has touched any such thing shall be unclean until evening and shall not eat the holy offerings unless he washes his body with water. And when the sun goes down, he shall be clean. And afterward, he may eat the holy offerings because it is his food. So, so while the sun, the, the light of judgment is shining on these things, this person is unclean. His sins are apparent. But actually, when the, the sun goes down in the night, well, that, 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 at that point, he becomes clean again. Uh, symbolically, he, he the, these sins can no longer be seen. I, I, I is, is is what I I think I, I take away from them. Uh, and there's similar ideas in in Joshua chapter eight. Uh, this is this is dead bodies, isn't it? It is. Yeah, Joshua eight verse twenty nine. Uh, the king of Ai he hanged on a tree until evening, and as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take down his corpse from the tree cast it at the entrance of the gate of the city and raise over, over it a great heap of stones that remains to this day. So, so in uh, it, when, when the sun is in, in the sky, uh, these things, this, this sin is obvious. And then, then when it goes down, then, then other things can be done, is, is, is what it says. And, and it's, uh, God's judgment isn't being shown at this time. Um, and so, yes, yeah, sin is... It is judged in the eye of God, isn't it, by the standards of God? I guess, uh, and though sim it's always there uh, symbolically, things like death and uncleanness they belong in the dark, and so so these things, so so yes, these these things become clean in the dark. That's where they belong uh, in the light of in the light of God in the day. Uh, they don't belong, and and they are wrong, and they are unclean at those times. Uh, there are various, but we've we've looked at some of them, and, and there are more verses in the Psalms which which talk about these ideas um, in, in terms of the sun and things. The, the one I will turn to is Psalm eighty four, because to my mind this is a, a lovely practical image of the sun or a practical description of the sun. Um, so Psalm eighty four verse eleven, for the Lord God is a sun and shield; the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. And, and we see the sun, don't we? And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's incredibly hot, isn't it? So it's 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 there in the sky and we need protection from it. I, I certainly don't enjoy being in the sun. I like to be in the shade. I will go and find a, a shady spot whenever I can. And, and what it says here is that the Lord God is the sun. And it's, it's that important thing that we, we need but he's also a shield, so he he is something that that shades us. He's a a, a, a portent of shade, and and that is God's grace, isn't it? So so we've got God's judgment, and that is important, and that shines down heavily upon us. But but we've also got the protection from it that God gives us, and and that is that is God's grace that that allows us to be uh, judged righteous, uh, even though we don't deserve that that correct judgment. And and I like that that practical I image of it. Um, I, I, I did this this Bible class at um, Sutton, where, where my parents are, and, uh, and, and my mum texted me after and she said, uh, I don't know whether there's anything in this, but but if we're in the sun too long, it burns us, doesn't it? It shows the impact of the sun on it, on, on us. Um, we, we can see the impact of it working on our on our skin. And, and is there any idea about that? Is, you know, is that a, a useful idea? And then it certainly has an, has an impact, doesn't it? Too much of it is bad for us, I guess, is uh, is the thing. And we, we need that protection, I guess, um, is maybe what we take from it. We also have, I think, Ecclesiastes, I think, is is summarised by this idea of the sun and, and the idea of, of judgment in this way. So, so Ecclesiastes 1 verse 3. What profit has a man from all his labour in which he toils under the sun? So, so in the eyes of God's judgment, what what 
what can actually a man achieve is is, is the start of Ecclesiastes. Uh, and we know that it talks about all the things that man can do, do and, and it finds that it's all vanity. It's all wind. Um, but if we come to uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. And, and so so really, you've got the sun there as well, haven't you? That, that God will bring every work into judgment. And, and that is the important thing. So the, the, the whole of the book is, is, is bookended by these these talks of what can man do when 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 God's you know to in the light of God's judgment and and the answer is is nothing useful so so do your best to follow His commandments is is the thing fear God and keep His commandments for this is man's all uh, is is the summary of the book and 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 I think it, it does sum it up nicely. The sun appears in various places in the New Testament, um, so it, it appears in the parable of the sower. The, the seed is all sown, isn't it? And it's all growing, and, but it's uh, or, or some of them don't become apparent quite how how faulty they are until the sun shines down on them. That their faults become apparent when the sun shines on them, don't they? The uh, the, the sun is mentioned at the time of Jesus's transfiguration, so his his face is shining like the sun, uh, and maybe uh, you know that has a bit of a link to my mum's idea of this idea of, of the sun burning us as well, I guess. Um, maybe there is some, some some practical ideas there as well. Um, Luke twenty three is is is, uh, is worth thinking about. Luke twenty three verse forty five, and and really it's it's worth thinking about because I've got no idea what it's what it's describing really, and I, I don't think uh, well maybe maybe we do, and maybe you can tell me, but. But Jesus is death on the cross, isn't it? So so Luke 23, verse 44. Now it's about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Uh, and it's it, it's interesting. I hadn't really read it properly. It was, it was the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And then the sun was darkened. So, so again, it's it's God being in control of his creation. And we understand that this was a time of complete darkness on the earth, that, that there was nothing godly happening here. Uh, and so God's judgment had to be taken away. Otherwise, he would have destroyed the earth. It was such such a terrible event that was happening. But but yes, it's it was dark over the whole earth. And then the sun was darkened at the ninth hour. And 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 I have no explanation of what it was, but but it was definitely something odd. I was going to say weird, um, and, and it was from a human point of view. It was weird, wasn't it? But um, the, the longest eclipse. Just I've, I, 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 I was I was thinking, you know, with, what you know, what could it be? Well, the longest solar eclipse is seven and a half minutes. Is the longest you can have a solar eclipse for, um, and and so three hours of darkness. It doesn't doesn't come anywhere. You know, it's nothing like that, is it? And 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 the sun wasn't taken away until the end of the darkness. So 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 yeah, I I don't I, I understand symbolically what's going on, but but physically again, it it doesn't make sense. Like the uh, like the the sundial, it, it doesn't really make sense to us at all, does it? But it does show God's in the in control. Um, let's have a look at Acts twenty six. Uh, Acts 26, verse 23. Uh, Acts 26, verse 22, shall we start out? Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witnessing to both small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. And so, so Paul is is describing God's glory, isn't it? And he's he's saying that this would be this would come to the the Jewish people, um, the the Jewish people and the Gentiles. So it would be spread around the world as well. Uh, and 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 that was uh, was what God what what Paul was was teaching. He was teaching, uh, and 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 there are various ideas here, aren't there? So it's the idea of witnessing um these things so so having symbols 
uh, and saying no other things than that which the prophets and Moses said would come. So the, the law and, and how you should live uh, and, and proclaim the light to the Jews and to the Gentiles is the idea. Uh, and then Ephesians chapter four. Uh, Ephesians chapter four. And verse 25, therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbour, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Uh, and it, so, so, yes, it's it's that idea of, of we need to to judge with the same judgment which with which we are judged, don't we? Uh, that's uh, that's what, what the Gospels tell us. Uh, and yeah, this is saying that you need to you need to be careful because the sun will go down at some point. The the judgment will come. This will be the the, the appointed time, as as it said back in Genesis, and 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 that will come upon us unawares if we are not careful. So so do not let the sun go down on your wrath because uh, because that's showing that you are judging people and not forgiving them. Uh, is is the idea there? And. I've already said, and we'll we'll sort of finish with these ideas. So if we we go to Isaiah sixty, I've always already said that it it seems that the the sun will come to an end. Uh, Isaiah sixty, and verse nineteen. It says, "The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor your brightness shall, shall the moon, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you." But the Lord will be to you an everlasting light and your God, your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and the days of your mourning shall be ended. And so symbolically, probably here, but but also I think literally, as we'll, we'll come on to a couple of other verses in a minute. It, it seems that, that the sun is only here for a fixed time. It said in Psalms that, that the sun knows its end. Uh, and, and as I say, it, it, the scientists tell us that it will come to an end, but but I think it's going to be a little bit quicker than they, they think it will. In Joel chapter 2, uh, Joel chapter 2 and verse 10. The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and moon grow dark and the stars diminish their brightness. Probably symbolic that verse, but then verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So, so the sun shall be once again turned to darkness. And, and you know, it literally was during the, the, the time of Jesus, wasn't it? And then finally uh, to, to Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 5, for there shall be no night there. They shall need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Uh, and so so that is is the world coming full circle, I think, isn't it? That that on the, the first day of creation, God created light uh, and it wasn't coming from anywhere. It was just light. Uh, the, the world was illuminated. Um, and, and that was was. Then, then symbolically picked up by the sun, which was was to be to us a, a symbol, uh, symbolically of, of God's division, God's judgment, this separation of good from bad. Uh, and it was to be there till the appointed time is, is those ideas that, that we have in Genesis chapter one, these signs and seasons. It was to be there till the appointed time as as the uh, the tabernacle of, of appointment uh, was talking about God meeting with his, with his people. Uh, and so the the sun is there, and 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 it has uh, it has guided us to these things. Uh, and and so let's just finish in in Romans chapter thirteen, which I think is a a nice place to finish, even if uh, slightly different. So so uh, Romans thirteen and verse twelve: the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. And and as I read verses like these now, I've, I've certainly got a slightly different idea using the, 
the, this idea of, of the sun that I, I think we get from Genesis chapter one, uh, this idea of, you know, we, we need to, to judge ourselves. We need to be aware of the things that we're doing. Uh, and that for, therefore we will cast off the works of darkness and, and we will put on the, uh, the, the works of light. Uh, and yes, the, one day the, the sun will not be needed anymore and, and it will come to an end. And, and then the world, as we, we just read in Revelation, will be, be illuminated by God once more. Uh, thank you very much for listening.